Welcome back to another episode of Car John powered by Collects and Car Dealer Pro. We have a special episode today with all of the Collects and Car Dealer Pro teammates here. We have Alex Lynn, Delco Rips on IG, Alex Lariano, Pole Hitters on IG. All have great experience uh, collecting cards in the uh, car collecting space. We're talking about the national, uh, some football prospects, and, and and many more things to the topic. So, uh, guys, welcome to the show. Alex, this is your, or I'll call you pull hitters, maybe, or Lariano. Your yeah, first time on the pod. Whatever works. Man. Welcome. Um, so, let's just get right into it. Um, national is coming up. Uh, both of you guys have been to much many more nationals than I have been to. Last year was my first one. Uh, so, Lariano, where are you... Um, What's your mindset heading into the national, prepping for it? What are you chasing after? What's your goals uh, in Chicago? Well, first off, I would like to say to, you know, anyone out there that's watching, it's their first national too, uh, make sure you bring uh, some comfortable sneakers. That's like uh, one thing that, you know, super important. Obviously, you're going to be walking the floor, um, and it takes quite some time to actually get through all of those different booths and things like that. So be comfortable and uh you know, come prepared, you know, cards that you're maybe not looking to move, just bring them anyway. You may find a trade or something that it's in, you know, that may intrigue you. And, you know, you may uh, end up walking out with a, with a grail of yours. Alex, what's your mindset going into Chicago? Yeah. I mean, I'm excited to kind of go back and just see everybody in the hobby that I know, you know, because we've got a few months off from shows and this is the one show that, you know, all the connections that you've met at all the shows across the country, they're all going to converge on Chicago in this one week. So, um, yeah, just getting to see all of my friends that I've made in the hobby and kind of uh, get to, you know, nerd out on cards for a full uninterrupted week. I mean, to me, that's like that's a vacation. And, you know, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I I'm excited. We're all excited. We have big plans for the Clex and Card Dealer Pro team for the national uh, but I was talking to uh, Delco about this yesterday that since we're driving out, or half of us are driving, flying, driving back, right? We might be more prone to buy more, like loose end cards, because oh. now we have, you know, because if I'm buying a row of a uh, hundred cards and go up to someone's table and buying it for 150 bucks, like I'm not putting down the airplane. No way. So it's us three that are driving back, right? So I say we fill out Ted's minivan <laughs> to the brim, get it lifted up. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll load it with cards. I, I must say, for me personally, I am, I know what card I'm trying to go after at the National, and it's um, the 1982 Wrestling All-Star card of Hogan. I'm going to get it in a low pop. I want to I want to make sure that I want to get a PSA 3 or 4 or 5, whatever, crack it, and then submit for him to get signed, and then wow. uh, and then regrade it again. So you, that, you, I know exactly where I'm going for. Yeah, you have a, you have a really... Uh, I have an agenda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do have some, uh, you know, LeBron James, Topps Chrome, PSA 5, uh, BGS three, like I have some wiggle room to uh, Mahomes. I think PSA PSA eight rookie. Yep. So like, so I have some leverage to get it. I don't know how much it will cost yet, but we'll see. Any 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 outs? Any particular? I don't know. Like one particular card. card like you know, I was always after the ninety six AI refractor, and now that I've kind of hit that, like into in one card. But I'm looking for Jalen Hurts. Like to me, uh. You know, coming off of that season last year, plus the improvements that the Eagles made in the draft, I'm, I think he's undervalued versus other plays, and especially versus the newer guys, you know, Ritter, Love, all those guys, right? Anyone that's new from this season, if you look at Jalen Hurts and what he's accomplished and who's on the team and what if you project the future a little bit, I think, uh, you know, he's prime for a buy. So, you know, I'll probably look to bring a lot of my stuff and consolidate into, like, a, a bigger Jalen Hurts piece. Speaking of Jalen Hurts, I had my, uh, yeah, tell tell everyone about your Jalen Hurts and Mahomes uh, collection. Because yeah, that, I'm a I'm a big uh, yeah I'm a big Hurts guy. Um, I'm actually looking to move some Hurts at the National and get into uh, some vintage baseball. Um, you know, I feel like you know that holds a little bit more value, and it's uh, you know later down the line I could look at it as a uh, you know maybe a, a better investment. Smart. But, well, who were some who were some uh, guys that you're? Yeah, what a Jackie, man. Not what a Jackie. Yeah, it's what a Jackie. Obviously. Which one? Uh, I love the fifty Bowman. Yeah, probably the fifty Bowman. Is that yeah. is that the uh, landscape one? What's the uh, wait, is that? No, it's the vertical, the right. small square. Yeah, part. super small square. Like though, like that is just it's it's iconic. I mean, everyone in the hobby you know knows about that card. Even you know my grandpa knows about that card. So maybe your grandpa had that card. Boy, hey. 
And you, you know, you put it in a Velveeta cheese box, like, right? <laughs> and like that dude uh, for the who had the Mickey Mantle. Which have you seen that came back like a PSA six? I think. Wow, that's incredible. That is that is insane. It's incredible. I did not know that. Well, I mean, Velveeta. I think I commented on last night on Instagram. I said we got to call this the the cheese mantle. There we go. <laughs> yeah, name yeah. itself. I love when the, the cards have the specific names. But going off of uh, what Liriano was saying, like I owned a uh, fifty four Hank Aaron last summer i quickly sold it because the vintage market was really hot at the time it was easy to just kind of flip it for a little bit of money but i regretted getting rid of that card ever since like i remember kind of sitting on my desk and just being like it's like a piece of art that card to me so um that's one card i'm going to be looking for there's going to be a ton of 54 irons for for sale there and all sorts of grades and you know if i'm able to move some stuff and get some free cash like i have like kind of this mental rolling list of all cards that I like aspire to own and want to own. And it's a matter of like seeing one that's priced to sell and that, you know, you don't have to overpay for, and then, you know, kind of having the right moment in time to make the deal. I also think, uh, in, in AC last year, there was a lot of people that set up that just wanted to show off their stuff. And I think there needs to be a section of the national that is just like, this is museum row where like, I remember last year, a guy had three, uh, you know, tables worth of just Joe DiMaggio cards that he wasn't selling. And it was cool to see like duplicates of, you know, 20 of one card from the fifties. But I mean, they need to separate that. I think to, to just, cause like if, I, if I'm going up to your table, like if I'm looking at it, I mean, nine times out of 10, I'm probably not buying something, but if I'm going to get something, like I want to touch it, look at it. Right. Whereas like, I don't know what do you guys feel about that. Like showing off your stuff at a show. I mean, you know, they're, they're like when I when I set up at shows, like you know, I do have some cards that are, you know, if I hear hear the right number, I'm definitely going to move it. Um, but there's some cards that I just put out there to kind of, you know, track people, like make people say, like, you know, like how much are you, you know, what are you asking for that? Yeah. Um, and you know, again, like you know, you're gonna have your uh, your guys that set up. Like I know this one uh, one guy that you know he pretty much has a like. A bunch of Mahomes uh, are true RPAs, and I'm just like, wow, like this is this is kind of insane. Like you know, he probably owns the pop for that, um, the majority of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes you you may strike a deal or a trade. Like I, I'm not too sure, but I doubt that Dimaggio guy was uh, you know eager to move any of that stuff. Yeah. Well, it's tough because I feel like it's tough because it's like those guys like they don't like self-identify that they don't want to move any. Like, they're not going to say that, right? Yeah. Like, it's kind of like, it's hard because, you know, it's hard to feel that out to make, like, an official rule against it. But, yeah, the National definitely does have a lot of that. But, uh, you know, it's 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 kind of cool in the, in the other sense, too. Like, as opposed to shows, like, on the travel circuit, like Burbank, Dallas, something like that. Like, it's this, like, dudes that have been doing at the National for 40, 50 years, and that's, like, their one big show that they actually travel to. And it kind of brings out, I would say, different vendors and collectors that you might see on the regular travel kind of shows. Yeah, let's uh, let's pivot back to football for a second. Um, on the field and on in sports cars, I guess they go hand in hand these days. What are we? What what matchups are you looking for? Uh, training camp into the uh, week one, Alex Lariano. What, what what matchups are you looking for, both on the field or I guess in cards as well? Um, are you talking like uh, like quarterback battles? Quarterback or, battles, or just you know so, any upcoming rookies you're after? Are you are you are you trying to get more Mahomes? Or I'm actually looking to get rid of um a lot of my Jordan Love. I was collecting a lot of Jordan Love early on. Uh, same thing with Hertz. Like when you know when I first got back into the hobby, like that was one of the the bigger you know prospects that I uh, was looking at. Um, but you know I'm I'm very intrigued by Kyle Trask. I think Kyle Trask has a very bright future. I think that he could actually uh, beat Baker Mayfield for the starting job. And, you know, I'm excited to see what he brings to the table. I mean, having, you know, backing up Tom Brady, I mean, that like that's, you know, coming out of Florida, like backing up Tom Brady, like that's it's huge. Mm -hmm. I think he's probably learned a lot. Um, you could kind of see the similar success with, with Jimmy G at, at some point, you know, early on when uh, he was backing up. Uh, Tom Brady on the Patriots. So, um, just Kyle Trask, uh, really, uh, also, you know, rooting for Davis Mills. I'm a big Mills guy. I know I'll probably catch a lot of, uh, grief about that, but you know, I'm used to it. Um, have a lot of his cards as well. 
just because like that last year, uh, that last rookie year, he ended up having better numbers than any other rookie in that draft class as far as quarterbacks go, including Mac Jones. So um, I'm really, um, you know, a firm believer in uh, what Davis Mills and Kyle Trask could, could bring to the table. Uh, Delco, what do you what do you what do you think of some of these the uh, upcoming seasons yeah. for the NFL? I mean, you know, I don't really have any like football analysis take on on a, on it specifically, but I think it's kind of interesting how the hobby kind of and I talked about this when I was on last time gravitates towards that unknown, you know, limitless potential, but limitless you know bottom to play. Um, and it's I think what's kind of interesting you got coming up you have. You know, Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi, you have the 49er situation with Trey Lance and Brock Purdy. Um, and that's just a couple of them. And, and there's several where we don't know who the starter is going to be. And just by winning the job, you know, there's going to be a spike. It, and there's also going to be an opposite side of the collectors that, you know, were picking up those cards hoping that they would be the starter and now they won't be. And um, I just think that's kind of an interesting thing. And it's, it's fun for the for the football market, but what it does is it doesn't create a lot of long term collectors of right. these players. Like, it's it's very temporary, and you know people are in and out. And I I think that I don't know how good that is long term. I think that remains to be seen because it. I think this is all very new. I think everyone should recognize that this the the way the football market is behaving and operating is super new and was not around in like ninety five. This was not a thing. Whereas like baseball cards have a lot more tradition and um you know like the 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 tries and trues and the principles have been the same for a long time yeah i'm not i'm not a brock purdy guy at all i just want to state <laughs> state that on the on, on the record here on the bar john I hear you. yes or no I you too or i mean i think three laps they need to just give him a shot like for i just gotta see if he's healthy i have to see how it would purdy didn't pass the eye test to me i mean i thought he had a noodle arm and everyone yeah. was saying that about hurts but i think purdy really showed no arm talent uh in his first year now i could be wrong but that's what i saw when i watched the games i saw a lot of short passes yep. to mccaffrey and debo and then yep. kind of doing all the real work kittle like real quick just like dump offs and again you know he's got time to develop but he did suffer a pretty uh major injury uh against our eagles so um what know. about rogers i mean that's a guy that like he's got the mvps he's got a super bowl i mean he's going to a new team now with a young defense and young I love offensive that. core like if he does well i do think that the hobby could come back around on him what do you think Liriana? um personally i am my dad's a packers fan so you know i grew up watching obviously the eagles because i was a big eagles eagles guy and uh you know my dad uh always mentioned like bart Starr, you know brett Favre, and he always said you know watch out for this kid aaron Rodgers." and you know we watched him at cal like we watched him when he got you know drafted and became you know brett Favre's backup and my dad was like really you know adamant about having him start having him start and then you know when he got his chance he really made an impact so i'm not the biggest Rodgers guy but you know, I do have a, uh, I guess, I guess I have a a, a firm. Uh, I don't know. I, be, I believe I believe in Anne Marie. Yeah, 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 I believe in. I I've been actually get... with a friend, a family friend. I I took the over for Jets wins this year. I think it's like nine and a half. I, I mean, it's a tough division. Don't yeah, get wrong. Their schedule, their schedule doesn't look too tough though. The first five, I, I forget. First five games are pretty tough. I think they versus Bills, Cowboys. Like it's it's pretty it's pretty rough. That's a that's a good point, Dave, because I wanted to bring that up because last year, you know, Jalen Hurts saw this huge meteoric rise in price through all throughout the summer and then he he put it on the field too, right? right. And when he was six and zero, oh, that was a huge inflection point in the hobby where his cars were really like the cards to buy, the hottest the, and sometimes the most expensive for a particular parallel among like Burrow and Herbert. It started to get closer, right? And um, you know, I think like how you start the season really matters in football and like you got to go on a win streak. So looking at that early season schedule of like who can go on a run, I'm trying to remember a lot of people were looking at like, oh, week one, Ritter plays the Falcons. So like he's going to be 1-0 or, or maybe, maybe it's how. But anyway, like people were just always kind of doing that. I think it's like an interesting thought of how you can do a little bit of research and try to predict like who that September October, you know, kind of player that will translate from the summer. 
Um, for sure. Let's spice things up with this in this episode of Car John. Um, oh, Alex and I, Alex Uh-oh. and Delco and I, we we ripped this open for a video in their office yesterday, and I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's have some fun. So when we do get the Wemby redemption, let's 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 we'll we'll put it off to the side. So we're while we talk about the next topics, we'll be opening uh, uh, 20, 22, 23 Bowman Chrome University basketball in hopes yeah. of getting uh, Wemby Victor Wembanyama. And Caitlin Clark. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty nuts. The base of this, of the Victor Rambayama is going for double the box price right now. That's crazy, yeah. Um, that's a little bit of 2020 throwback, right? <laughs> yep. Pop <laughs> and um, boom. So, uh, as we open this, we'll talk about some other uh, topics and baseball. Lariano, you're pretty, you're pretty in the, in the weeds of baseball prospects. Yeah, you you've know. been on it, right? Yeah. All your plays have come out right. So yeah, we're about to hit you yeah. some, some questions yeah. so we can learn That's from the minister. Give us your pump and I'm just kidding. Now, um, yeah, like, I mean, you were big on J-Dom, I feel like, before people were on J-Dom. Like, you're, you're plugged into the yeah. MLB pipeline. So, like, 100%. Give, me, give me two names that, like, you, you're watching. Obviously, we're not, this is not gambling advice or sports card advice, but, like, I don't know, in your personal opinion, like, who... Who's the player we should keep an eye on in Major League Baseball as a young prospect? As far as them being uh, already called up to the bigs? or It do- doesn't matter. Give us your f- couple favorite rookies, and then give us uh, some guys that have recent Bowman autos to, to choose from. So right now, I'm honestly like really intrigued yeah. by uh, Ellie De La Cruz, obviously. And uh, he's a beast. Yeah, he just looks the part, too. The like- dude is a stud. I mean, like he reminds me of just like a, a, a better O'Neal Cruz. If if I if you will, you know what I mean. Um, but at the same time, I think you know he he's going to turn out to be like one of the faces of baseball and and really just just show out. Um, but you know, there's other pe- players like uh, Jordan Walker. Like I'm big on Jordan Walker too. Like I know he got sent down like you know the middle of the season for no no reason. Actually, it was pretty early in the season. What the hell was talking about? Um, you know, and I, I don't think he deserved that, but he definitely learned from that, and I doubt he'll ever get sent back down. Anything? Get anyone get anything yet? Uh, Anthony Black, Purple Wave to two ninety nine. We're trashing the studio with packs here, but cook it off. But yeah, um, another guy's Gunnar Henderson. I mean, the kid he started off pretty slow, but you know, I think he has a lot of potential as well. Um, I think he's riding a. I think he hit three bombs in a row. And I think the. The actual, the record is seven, if I'm not mistaken, seven home runs in a row. I think that's held by Griffey. Um, I, I kind of wish that the Orioles get their stuff together because, like, I, I look at the Orioles like the Knicks. Like, when the Knicks were in the playoffs, Major League Baseball is better. I think when the Orioles, you know, like, when they had, then they had, like, almost, like, 90 wins a few years ago, and then the next season they just, like, yeah, they, they could definitely do it. I mean, Adley Rushman is one of the best players, yeah. but he's got to catch probably. He's Probably is the best catcher, and then uh, you know they got the gunner, and I also have a couple of good pitching prospects. What about um, Junior Common Era? Like, are you after any of the guys that are like still you know nineteen years old in Double A, Single A? Um, yeah. What are, what are some of your guys that you like that are that haven't come up to the MLB yet, where their Bowman autos are still like two three hundred dollars at least or minimum for the base? So right now I'm really into Yover Piguero. He's a uh, a Dominican prospect for the Pirates. Um, I've been following him for quite some time. I think he got called up last year for like a number of games. He did pretty well. I think he actually hit a bomb, if I'm not mistaken. But um, it's been a it's been a little rough for him as of late. But you know, I think the kid has a lot of potential, and he could definitely, you know, make it like that. that. No, you know, auto. But yeah, I'm I'm I was you know I I have a bunch of his Bowman first autos. Um, yeah, I mean. J Dom, like I said, you know, I, I wish Bolpe would kind of, you know, step it up a little bit. Being a Yankee fan, um, still got a lot of time. Yeah, he's he's it, it's 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 early, but you know, at the same time, it's like you see these other guys, like even like Zach Neto, like you know, he didn't even go to AAA. Like he went straight from college to the pros, and he's making a huge impact. Jeez, I got nothing. Anything still going, I'm still going there. All right, you're old. Um. All right, let's get into our next topic. Uh, what's your PC grail? You guys have anyone? Oh yeah, big in mind? Time. I'd have to say the '93 SP foil, the Jeter. Um, that's just been my. Uh, that's just. I, I think I've owned that card like five different times in my lifetime. 
Uh, it's just been a card that's like a staple in, in my household back in New York. And, you know, again, like going back to how I got into cards and everything like that, like my dad used to take me to shows and we'd see the foil and we'd be like, no, you know, we get the paper, you know, 92 draft pick uh, card. And finally I was able to, you know, save some money up during the summer, picked one up raw and got it graded and I think it came back like a PSA 7 which is not bad uh, for that card because that card has a lot of auto. Of... did you would you don't know how to say this guy's name <laughs> but yeah like I don't want to butcher I don't want to butcher it should we just show it I mean yeah, yeah. we got what, what's your tab Mattis Buzelis International yeah International Bowman Crown on him the next Christoph Zingis maybe there we go Okay. Uh, not Victor Wemby. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm out of packs there. Yeah, hey, so you you got it the oil. I think I have yeah, so at least decent. Oh, give me a little gold. Anything? Uh oh, yo, you actually? You, no, I'm not kidding. Uh oh, we see some color. It's it's maybe yellow, but it's not redemption. But if it was Caitlin Clark, yeah. it would be good. I I did. I hold on. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's see. Um, Delta, what's your what's your PC girl? Mark Mitchell. Boom. Is it auto? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I would say I'm an AI collector, and I do own a 96 Topps Chrome Refractor, which is pretty inarguably his best rookie card. Um, so it's a PSA 8, but it looks like a 9, and is no greening, and it's centered. So I really like my copy, but, you know, I'd love to work up one day and get a 10. Um, I think that's, you know, definitely on my PC Grail list. I was thinking about it because I knew you were going to ask that question. I don't think there's anything else um, on in terms of AI cards that I really want. So I might need the. I've been recently working on my Phillies collection. I pick up like low end 52s, uh, 52 like Phillies stuff and just all vintage Philly stuff. And I'm really like going after and just I want to own, you know, a Bum and Chrome auto from all the key prospects for the Phillies just because, God forbid, one becomes Mike Trout one day. And I didn't pick up an auto when I could have for cheap. Like I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll be sad with myself. So I was turned again to like more of a hoarder uh, and a true collector for like Phillies um, baseball prospects. All right, guys, uh, what cards in the future are you most excited for? And I'm prefacing that based on you know Bronny James cards, uh, maybe the first card of LeBron and his son appearing in the card together. Like, what cards in the future do you think are we most excited for? You know years ahead that we kind of can talk about now knowing that that card will soon be on the market down the road i'm just really excited for i mean this is kind of vague but i'm very excited for you know baseball cards to get licensed and you know appear in national treasures like so we could actually see like you know team logos in in the biggest products that are out there so um i'm excited to see that you know not not necessarily any player in particular, but um, definitely would love to see some uh, some team logos on Immaculate, Flawless, and uh, NT, for sure. That's pretty cool. I, I think, uh, I, I don't know, you know, I don't think I'll be in play for this, but I might buy a box, you never know. But I think with Victor Wembeyama, like we've already seen, we just, we're ripping Bowman Chrome University, which is a product we probably would not have ripped if Victor wasn't in it. Um, I just, I'm just really excited. It's not for me personally, but I'm excited to watch the hobby chase for the Victor Wembeyama gold prisms and the the black finite 101. I think um, you know when the hobby is excited and chasing something, it's like the most exciting time to be involved in it. Even if you know you're not the one buying into the breaks with the best chance, like it's still to me is just something that creates a lot of buzz and excitement. And uh, you know the basketball market could use some resurgence and yeah. use back into it. It's taken a lot of steam has kind of pulled off from some recent classes and gone to baseball. So Victor Wembeyama coming back and those cards being out, I think gives it some more juice. I and kind of, I'm sorry to cut you off, but to piggyback off of that, I'm, I'm also very excited about tops Chrome basketball coming back. Oh, absolutely. I am stoked. Do you think they should do like a throwback, like put an insert? Oh, of without like a doubt. Guns, yeah. Like all white suit. Oh yeah. And, Heck yeah. Three jersey, like, absolutely. Or do you or think like, that would deteriorate the actual value of? No, because the, if you think the, about it, like what they did with this year's prism is they did that flashback to the first year's prism. So if they make it like a flashback card, like that would be sick. Yeah, I really think that that would really be a, a chase. 
and it'd probably be an insert too. So you know what I mean? Like it be it'd be nice to see. And like the huge gap between like LeBron James's top crim cards from the early mid two thousands when they had the license to now, like it creates the scarcity of Topps Chrome refractors, right? They're divided between yeah. Panini brands and now Topps Chrome refractors. So like these late career last couple of years when Topps has the basketball license, but LeBron's going to have gold Topps Chrome refractors, they're going to create another resurgence and yep. buzz for those products. Like I'm, I'm agree. I am really excited for that. Topps does a great job producing the products, like a lot better job. We just opened it than, than Panini. Yeah, got nothing. Ain't got nothing, but the cards look great. And Kay- <laughs> Kaylin Clark first. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, but the card I'm most excited for in the future, and this might be a hot take, but I think the first uh, wrestling card of Logan Paul and Prism is going to be a huge monster card. Um, I think it's uh, hopefully it's a uh, on card auto, not a sticker auto. Hopefully, uh, I know Fanatic said they want to go away from that, or Panini. Hopefully, Panini goes away from that. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think the Logan Paul Prism. Auto and the Black 101 is going to be a monster card. I I think, again, hot take alert, sound the alarm. I think it might even sell more than the Rocks card. I know it's like crazy to say, but I just think like he's so polarizing. It's going to be his first actual card uh, on the market in a said sport as in wrestling. So even if it's him bidding it up, I don't, I don't, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I can see that. that I, too, yeah. I mean, I think it'd be cool even if his first card is a picture of him wearing like the Charizard cards, like. A card in the card. Oh, that's really cool. That'd be a cool idea to kind of see. So that's my card I'm most excited for um, in the future. Cool. Cool. But I know you guys aren't the biggest wrestling. No, I did. Hey, man, it's choose your own adventure on the right. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Let's go back to the national before we wrap up. Um, uh, Alex um, Lariano, pool hitters on on IG. You you have experience with grading. Correct. Um, You're pretty spot on with some uh, of your expertise of with look for. do you, what's your advice on a grading at the national? Should you, you know, drop off your cards? Like, what, what's your process of? Well, definitely, like, you know, go back, going back to like grading 101, right? Like, you want to make sure the centering is good. You know, the edges are good, the corners are good, the surface is good. Um, you got to make sure that you, you, you know what you're bringing to PSA if you're going to be, you know, hand delivering them one of your cards that you'd love to get graded at the national. Um, but it wouldn't hurt to do like a raw card review beforehand um but at the same time grading is very tedious it definitely differentiates you know per product um you know paper cards versus chrome cards things like that you'll find different defects and different you know approaches as to how you'd actually assess the card um depending on what it actually is so i think getting a uh you know a raw card review or just knowing if you know how to grade a card if you're, you know, if you received some nines or tens, like, hey, like, you know, by all means, it, it would be the most ideal thing for you to do is to, you know, bring it to PSA, like, they're right there. Um, I actually did that, you know, back in uh, 2021 at the National of Chicago. I did a red cracked ice Corbin Carroll. I actually did a crossover from BGS. It was a BGS 9.5, and it turned out to become a PSA 10. Mm. So was uh was pretty stoked on that. And yeah, I mean, that's my take on it. Just go in there with confidence. Obviously, if you know grading, like, you know, just send it. Let's go. I think actually I, I have also been better at like inspecting. I mean, I'm, I don't have the expertise you have, Ariano, but like I even when I, I showed you the LeBron refractor that I had, I, I looked at it and it looked a little, not bent. What's, what's the word I'm looking for? Like bowed. Bowed, yeah. Right. And I knew it was going to be, a, I mean, in, in my mind, I'm like, oh, it's a 10, but I knew. When I got it back, it was a nine, and they come back a nine. Hey, nine still mint. That's my big thing. Nines still mint. Yeah. True. Um, Delco rips. Any any other tidbits on the national you want to bring up? Yeah, I think uh, with the same day grading stuff, like you know, I think it's like really fun experience just as a collector to do at the national. Something to do. So, I mean, it is a little bit more expensive, but if you have the opportunity to buy something to grade and just experience that. I personally have had a ton of fun with that. Like it's a great experience to sit, submit a card one day, maybe the next day, or even later on that afternoon, get it back fully encased and you know, you see the outcome, um, it's fun. So a couple things I look for, for cards that I'm gonna do that, if I don't already have the cards to bring from home, I'm looking for sealed stuff, uh, typically from Panini or from Tops, like a redemption. And the reason is because I know that it hasn't come out, touched anybody's paws, dropped on the ground, anything like that, you know it's sealed. And I've had a little bit more success with that 
Um, and, you know, keep in mind that it's an expensive endeavor to, to grade on site versus, you know, take the six weeks and send it in yourself. So um, if you're like a value person and looking for that, uh, like lower end kind of quick flip, I think like, you know, send it from home or go to your local card shop. But if you maybe have like a, you know, a car that's a little bit higher end and it's sealed and you want that fun experience, like I think that's what same day grading is really for. Um, also, if you don't feel like you want to mail it, uh, mail it there and you have like the security reasons and you just want to hand it in person. What about, um, I, I, I want to participate in it this year for the first time is the, uh, national black boxes. Oh, yeah. How, what, what's, what's your guys' advice of getting those stocking up now to be prepared for that moment at the national? So, um, wow. So last year at last year's national, uh, you know, I had a, I had a couple of redemptions with me. Um, and I submitted them to Panini and I ended up getting a, uh, Jalen Hurts all card auto inscripted go birds one of ones black box one of one nice and then a uh an acuna uh one of black box one of one as well auto immaculate auto again i wish it was licensed you know it's yeah. the, the atlanta braves logo but at the same time i think that you know the the ability that you have to to kind of like stack up and like you know save up all these redemptions like for the year like you go in there with a bunch of them. I think you'll probably walk out with something pretty. Yeah, I gotta get them pretty filled. Yeah, some. I, I can't. I definitely second that. Hundred percent agree. I my experience was I had a Rashad Bateman, one on one redemption uh, from Panini XR, probably worth like three hundred bucks. I go into Panini. You know they haven't redeemed it in five six months, and I said I want to. I want to. You know a white box one on one for this. So they they agreed, and then I got a Jason Tatum. Uh, game use patch uh, one on one and flipped it for eighteen hundred bucks at the national. Know. So I took know. like easily win. I definitely recommend, it, especially if it's a card that you're kind of like lukewarm about or you want to sell right away. Like very few people are seem disappointed by the white box one on one turnarounds. They they keep it to like names that you'll generally not be disappointed with. In my experience, right. like, real, real fast, let's break that down though. So someone like myself who hasn't got a, a black box before at the national. Buy redemptions online, and so you can't. You're, it's too late now. Yeah, so they have to be. Late. They have to be old enough. Like there's a. I think it might be 180 days. Right, it has to go to a certain point on a redemption, and then that redemption can turn into a white box. So what you can do is, you right before the national, like a week or maybe like two weeks before or something, they open it up on their website, and you can schedule an appointment and select the expired redemptions on your Panini account. Schedule an appointment to meet with Panini. And that's the official way. And then once you meet with them, you talk about the valuations of them, and then they give you the white box sealed um, w that's like in a particular sport and then with a particular value. And then you have a really fun box to open, a yeah. mystery box that you don't know what it is. Love that's it. the best part. Like when I saw the Jalen Hurts, I was like, no way. I know. It's like, like your yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Like they handpicked this for me. So. I remember last year at the National, I walked by a dude who, who opened up a, a Zion 101. But at that time, Zion was a lot. Yeah. Different than Zion. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I take the Zion one on one or the one on one yeah. even for yeah. even yeah, that's a, that's someone that maybe, you know, people are sleeping on. Yeah. That they weren't, you know, back in the day. The revenge tour. Right. Yeah. Zion coming soon. Um, all right, cool. So uh yeah, we're gonna be set up at the National Collects and Car Dealer Pro. Uh we're working on something really, really cool at the National. We don't wanna get into it uh too too soon now, but um it's a really cool idea, really cool marketing fan experience, collector experience that we're working on. Uh, I think it's gonna be a talk of the town, the national people can, um, I guess I'll just stop there. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't give too much. Away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will see for themselves. Yeah, just for yourself. But stop by our booth. If you don't know our booth number yet, as we're filming this episode, but, um, yeah, nationals will be a, a great time. We're going to make a loud presence there with the collects and car dealer pro team. And, uh, yeah, it should be fun. Definitely. Any, any parting words? Um, no, thank you for having me on, man. I'm yeah. really, appreciate how do people follow you on, on IG? Uh, just hit me up on at pull hitters. Delco Rips on IG at Delco Rips, and uh, I'll give a little plug uh, the Brotherly Love Card Show on July 23rd. Yeah, be sure to come out if you're in uh, South Jersey as well. Absolutely, and uh, make sure to don um, if, if you're if you have any customer service uh, emails. Alex Liriano is going through them, so he's, going through a lot of stuff. He's like, yeah, that's one. Of, what's one of the things that uh, uh, it's technology, right? right. It All right, guys. So uh, thanks for being on. That's Delco Rips. Uh, pole hitters, um, Alex Lynn, Alex Liriano, two Alexes on the team. Um, but we go by nicknames here at the office. 
Uh, thank you so much for watching this episode of Car John powered by Collects and Car Dealer Pro. We'll see you at the National, only see you on the next episode.